Friends of 35-year-old Christopher Case had become concerned when he hadn't shown up for work for several days. He did not answer any of their phone calls, and when they knocked on the door of his apartment, he did not respond. They called the police to perform a welfare check, and when the police entered the 35-year-old's apartment, they found the fully clothed body of Christopher Case sitting up in his bathtub with his head leaning up against the wall. The coroner determined that heart failure was the cause of death. What the police found that was a bit odd were multiple crucifixes hanging on each wall of his apartment. There were lines of salt across the doorway and around the baseboards, and religious music softly playing in several rooms. It appears that there may be more to Christopher Case's death than simple heart failure. In today's episode, we will look into the mysterious death of Christopher Case. In 1991, 35-year-old Christopher Case lived in the city of Seattle, Washington. The former small-town radio DJ was now an executive working for music production company Muzak. Born and raised in Richmond, Virginia, Christopher moved to Seattle when he landed a job at the Muzak Corporation. He was a quiet and unassuming man. Christopher had several close friends, but mostly he kept to himself. His hobby and great passion was ancient music. He preferred staying home and listening to and enjoying his music rather than spending the night out on the town. On April 11, 1991, Christopher Case had taken a business trip to San Francisco, California. While in San Francisco, Christopher met a woman who incredibly shared the same interest in ancient music that he did. It was very rare for Christopher to find anyone who had an interest in this subject. The two hit it off from the start, and they spent hours talking about a wide range of subjects, everything from literature to politics. What Christopher enjoyed talking about most, however, was ancient music. This was something he rarely had a chance to do. Christopher had to leave to attend business meetings but the two made plans to meet up for dinner later that evening. When the two met for dinner, their conversation picked up from right where it left off. The two of them laughed as they exchanged stories and were genuinely having a good time. At one point in the evening, the woman invited Christopher over to her place for drinks, and her tone was becoming more sexually suggestive in nature. Although Christopher thoroughly enjoyed spending time with the woman and admired her greatly, he had no romantic feeling towards her, so he politely declined her offer. The woman continued to make advances towards him throughout the rest of the evening, which made Christopher start to feel very uncomfortable. He finally told the woman he had no interest in a romantic relationship and told her he had to get going. Angered by his rejection, the woman told Christopher that she was a witch and that she was putting a curse upon him. She informed Christopher that he would likely be dead within a week. Christopher returned to his hotel room and was not overly concerned by what the woman had said. He was just happy to be back in his room and was relieved that he had not gotten too heavily involved with that crazy woman. Christopher attended another business meeting the following morning, and by the late afternoon, he was back home in Seattle. No sooner than when he started to unpack, 
Christopher had the strange feeling that he wasn't alone. He felt a cold chill run through his body, and then he thought he heard faint whispers coming from inside the closet. He carefully swung open the closet door, and to his relief, he found nothing unusual. As he continued unpacking, he again heard whispering, this time a bit louder and now coming from the kitchen. Christopher went to investigate and found nothing unusual. As he started back towards the bedroom, Christopher caught movement out of the corner of his eye. He quickly snapped his head in that direction, but saw nothing there. Christopher finished unpacking, and throughout the rest of the afternoon and evening, he heard whispers and saw shadowy figures at the periphery of his vision. But he ultimately chalked it up to fatigue from his business trip. Christopher decided the best thing to do was to just go to bed. As Christopher slept, he began dreaming of the woman he had met in San Francisco. The dream was pleasant enough as the two talked and laughed as they did while he was on his business trip. The dream, however, soon turned into a nightmare. The woman began choking Christopher and he could not breathe. He tried fighting off the woman, but he could not pry her hands off his neck. It was at that moment Christopher woke up gasping for air. He went into the bathroom to splash cold water on his face, and when he looked into the mirror, he was shocked to see bruising on his neck. There was also blood on his hands, and when he came back to bed, he saw blood on his sheets. Alarmed, Christopher remained awake the rest of the night. As he sat up in bed, Christopher continued to hear whispering and occasionally saw shadowy figures out of the corner of his eye. By the morning, Christopher was exhausted and was in no condition to go to work. He called the office and informed them that he would be taking the next few days off. Christopher put on some music to help himself relax and while sitting on his couch, he soon drifted off to sleep. The nightmare returned, right where he had left off the previous night with the woman's hands around his throat choking the life out of him. He woke up again, gasping for breath. At this point, Christopher was starting to wonder if the woman's curse was real. Later that day, Christopher went to an occult bookstore and picked up several books on witchcraft. He spoke to a man behind the counter named Victor and explained to him his situation. Victor recommended that he should pour a line of salt across the doorway and around the perimeter of his apartment to ward off the curse of the witch. On his way home, Christopher stopped at a Catholic bookstore and picked up two dozen crucifixes, a case of prayer candles, and several CDs of Catholic hymns. As soon as he arrived home, Christopher poured a line of salt across the entryway and along the baseboards of his apartment. He hung several crucifixes on each wall of his apartment, lit prayer candles in every room, and put on the Catholic hymn CDs to play, one in the living room and one in his bedroom. With his apartment now seemingly secure from the witch's curse, Christopher lay down on his bed to get some rest. The religious music was not quite to his taste, but it was relaxing enough, and Christopher managed to get a few hours of much-needed sleep. When Christopher woke up, he felt refreshed and renewed. He was beginning to doubt whether the events over the last day and a half actually occurred. Those doubts were soon erased when he again heard the sounds of whispers, this time even louder, coming from the living room. When Christopher went to investigate, he found that all the crucifixes had fallen from the living room walls. He spent the next several minutes rehanging the crucifixes when he again saw the shadowy movement out of the corner of his eye. This time, however, the shadow was not so quick to disappear. It seemed to linger a bit before it faded away. This went on for the next two days, and every time Christopher fell asleep, the nightmare would return. 
Christopher became convinced that the witch was going to kill him in his dreams. Christopher called his friend Josh and told him about the odd occurrences and of his nightmares. He told Josh that he was sure he would be dead by the end of the week. Josh tried to convince Christopher to come and stay at his place, but Christopher said he did not want to get any of his friends involved with the curse. Being concerned about his friend's safety, Josh went over to Christopher's apartment and knocked on the door. He could hear religious hymns blasting from inside the apartment and a minute later heard Christopher's voice at the door. Christopher insisted that he was fine and that it would be best if Josh left. Although still concerned about his friend's mental health and well-being, Josh decided to leave Christopher alone, at least for now. Over the next two days, Josh repeatedly tried to call Christopher, but got no answer. Josh went back to Christopher's apartment and knocked on his door. He could hear the music still playing inside, but Christopher did not answer the door. This is where Josh called the police. The police entered Christopher's apartment and found his fully clothed body sitting up in the bathtub. Just as the witch predicted, and as Christopher told his friend Josh, he was dead by the end of the week. Was this a case of heart failure as stated in the coroner's report, or was Christopher Case actually the victim of witchcraft? Many have dismissed the notion of witchcraft, saying that Christopher suffered from some type of mental breakdown and brought on his own death by not sleeping and by the added stress caused by the hallucinations. Others, however, are not so sure. Christopher Case was a healthy, well-rounded 35-year-old man who never showed any signs of mental illness in his life. The mysterious death of Christopher Case has raised many questions, and whether or not witchcraft was involved will remain unanswered. This concludes today's episode of the Paranormal Report. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. The team at the Paranormal Report really appreciates your support.